Hi everyone, it's Joey Remini from seekingbalance.com.au. I want to talk about what is tinnitus. So tinnitus are sounds that people can hear in one ear, in both ears, in their head, sometimes even in the body. I've heard people describe their tinnitus as sort of like vibrations moving through their spine. So it's any sound that is not perceived by anyone in the outer world. It's just you for you in your body. So tinnitus sounds can be mechanical. If you think about digesting a big meal and hearing your stomach gurgle or, you know, bending your elbow or your knee and hearing it pop. So some sounds in the ear could be coming mechanically from the muscles, tendons, bones, or even wax rolling around the ear canal. So there's that. But there's also the fact that tinnitus could be neural activity that is occurring anywhere from the inner ear along the spiral ganglion cells that send messages through the brainstem into the midbrain up into the auditory cortex. And anywhere along that pathway, the body could be perceiving that neurological synapsing activity as a sound. Whenever we have sounds in our body that are perceived as unhelpful, boring, not interesting, not useful, the brain's filter system tends to just deprioritize it and it shifts out of our awareness. So all of that neural activity can indeed be occurring, that there is neural impulses moving from A to B in our body, but we're not hearing it. We're not aware of it. So when people have bothersome, problematic tinnitus, the body has actually latched on to those neural pathways that represent the tinnitus sounds. And the body has decided it's a threat. It doesn't like it. It feels abnormal. It feels wrong in some way. And so we then we get this emotional association and this hatred and this resistance and this fear. And it then links into trauma loops. So we fight, flight, fawn, freeze from signals and sounds that are coming from our own body and it's very debilitating because we can't switch it off we can't run away from it we're stuck with this sound looping inside of us generally speaking there's not much a health professional or medical doctor can do a lot of people are told there's no cure or you need to live with it and i want to right here right now say that is not true you, it can resolve dissolve and disappear I no longer hear my own tinnitus. And the reason for that is I used neuroplasticity to teach my brain and body how to essentially create that neural signal as a safe signal, as a boring signal, as an unhelpful signal. So my body filtered it out. If I concentrate really hard, I can go in again and find it. It's those pathways are technically always there bubbling in the background. But what happens is I've really learned how to participate in what I would call the inner landscape of my body. So I can essentially turn the sound up by focusing on it, by getting curious about my body sound, or I can turn it down and remind my body that it's safe. It's a false alarm. Indeed, that sound is allowed to be in my body. And as I navigate neuroplasticity and as I learn to connect to my body and the inner landscape of my body, I can actually direct my attention toward what I want to feel and my desired sensations. So I'm not so heavily hooked and obsessively hypervigilant over pains and not quite right sounds or sensations. So I hope that's helpful, but neuroplasticity helps us to rearrange our neural maps, change how the neural connections are organized, and we can essentially take the tinnitus sounds from being very loud, very disturbing, very debilitating, and we can turn them all the way down so that they become either not perceived at all, imperceptible, or much more quiet, soft, and gentle. So learning those skills is something I do with my Rocksteady community. Visit seekingbalance.com.au to learn how to take that control back and how to learn to craft your inner world and your inner landscape. So it's a bye for now and I might see you in Rocksteady.